Welcome to the Son of Liberty podcast. I'm Wall. If you caught me last time, it was talking about the Second Amendment and the uh, law of the land, the supreme law of the land. Uh, YouTube has kind of been throttling me quite a bit and other social media. So um, make sure you leave a comment. Make sure, especially leave a comment. I want to know what, what everybody's feeling. And I know I'm going to get some private comments like I... Like I do because a lot of people are afraid of social media and getting, you know, shadow banned or banned or, you know, whatever. But what I'm going to talk about today is about the preamble. Because it came to my attention over the last, slightly over a week since I did the original one, that a lot of people don't understand the Constitution. I, didn't, I, I got five comments on that first one, and that really surprised me because, I mean, I publicized it or tried to quite a bit. So, I don't know, you know, it, it, I didn't even reach 100 views, and, you know, I, I figured it would go way over that. Um, so, let's get into the preamble a little bit. You know, uh, before the United States existed... There wasn't a legal government, not at all. A group of representatives acting in the name and by the authority of the good people of these colonies declared the independence of the colonies from the British crown in the state of Great Britain. In 1776, Declaration of Independence, the people were acknowledged as a source of authority, I, uh, example, i.e. the sovereignty which authorized the Declaration of Independence. Next came the Articles of Confederation in 1778. The states that existed by the authority of the people created those articles while in Congress assembled. But, you know, that didn't work out too well. And we're going to get into that why here. So in 1787, the people themselves came forth to ordain and establish this Constitution for the United States of America. On September 17, 1787, the states held a convention, and all those present unanimously joined in. So, unanimous concurrence was achieved, and the Constitution was born, later to be ratified in 1787. We, the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity, do ordain and establish this constitution for the United States of America. Now, many scholars have debated what the preamble means for years and for their own progressive agenda or whatever right and you know leave a comment down below we can debate it for years to come if you really want but this is my understanding who was the trust door we the people the venue the of the united states the purpose of this in order to form a more perfect union establish justice ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and secure the blessings of liberty. Well, who's the beneficiary of this? To ourselves and our uh, posterity, right? That's the beneficiary. That's the whole point. So you need to, uh, well... We don't need it, right? But there's going to be two enabling actions. Number one is do ordain, declare the law. We've got to declare the law. Enabling action two is to bring into existence or establish. And what are we trying to declare the law and bring into existence? The Constitution. For... Who's the trustee of this? For the United States of America, right? 
So the beneficiary, right, is to ourselves and future generations collectively. That would mean posterity, right? Posterity. That's what it is. So to have you to do this, right? We need to have a trustor and a trustee. There needs to be a venue. There has to be a purpose. There has to be a beneficiary. And there's two enabling actions. And what? The Constitution. So after the Declaration of Independence, but before ordaining an establishment of the Constitution, the people of the United States pretty much handled their own affairs using common law which is not even seen today. They were not subject to any higher authority other than the authority of the, of the common law as administered by the people themselves. What is that called? That's called self-governance. Self you have freedom of speech until, you, until it reaches another man's shoulder. Self-governance, you, you know... Although, uh, well, let me state this first. Although the states did exist, they only existed by the authority of the people. Every man was a king and every woman a queen, and none had any subjects. Upon declaring our independence, we all became sovereigns and members of the peerage, which is nobility. So I'm sovereign. And my sovereignty starts with me but it ends when it reaches another sovereign so if it reaches beyond that sovereign then common law came into practice right so um this is going to be quote unquote so quote the people of this state as the successors of its former sovereign are entitled to all the rights which formerly belonged to the king by his... Uh, this part I've got to reread here. The people of the state, as, a, as the successors of its former sovereign, are entitled to all rights which formerly belonged to the king through the medium of of their legislature they may exercise all the powers which previous to the revolution could have been exercised either by the king alone or by him in conjunction with his parliament subject only to those restrictions which have been imposed by the constitution of this state or of the u.s okay a lot of this is um, Lansing versus Smith from 1829. There's uh, Tennessee constitutional law. I will put all those links in the description, everybody. The enabling actions in the preamble are significant because there is simply nothing in the use of those words to imply that the people relinquished any of their own power and authority. The people declared the law. They ordained it. We are the trusters of this. So the people declared the law without taking away from themselves the authority to declare law again in the future. The people established the Constitution without taking away from themselves the authority to establish anything else in the future. In other words, the people gave birth to the Constitution without giving up any of their own power and authority. Amendment 10. Amendment X. The powers not delegated to the United States by the Constitution, nor prohibited by it to the states, are reserved to the states, respectively, or to the people. The government has no authority and cannot assume any authority over the people. Government powers may not reach beyond that which is constitutionally granted. 
in order for the government to subject people to its law, it is necessary for the people to relinquish their sovereignty. Sovereignty is a natural right which cannot, which cannot lawfully be relinquished involuntarily. Any removal of sovereignty must be accomplished voluntarily by the subject himself. The reason I bring this up is because of the next part. My next vlog or blog, whatever you want to say this is, um, it's not about my photo. This is about education. We have to educate our young people. Schools are not doing it. Colleges aren't doing it. I'm going to ask this question. Please leave in the comments down below an answer to this question. If you watch this video, please answer this question. Are you one of the people of the United States? As, you know, um, defined by the Constitution preamble? Or are you one of the citizens of the United States as defined in the U.S. Constitution 14th Amendment? I bet you didn't know this. Your answer affects the rights that you have. Peace, my fellow patriots. And I'll be working on uh, the answer to that question for next time. Thank you all for listening.